Hey everybody and welcome to the next study. So today we're going to be looking at one particular aspect of the Laodicean condition and that is her nakedness. For those unfamiliar with Seventh-day Adventist doctrine, the Seventh-day Adventist Church does claim the title of the Laodicean Church. However, they also claim that they are the remnant. So in my opinion, those uh, doctrinally are mutually exclusive. You can't be both, but that will be the point of this study. The first verse that we're going to look at today is Psalms 32.1. Blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, whose sins are covered. And that, of course, is referring to the righteousness of Christ, which is the linen. So our first verse that we're going to look at, we're going to start all the way in the beginning of Scripture. We're going to go to Genesis 3.8. And this is, of course, Adam and Eve. And they heard the sound of the Lord God walking in the, in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves among, from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? So he said, I heard your voice in the garden and was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you to not eat? So here we see in, in very basic language that being naked is a violation of the law according to the Spirit. And being naked is also equivalent with being in the condition of sin. And so that, again, is a condition in which we must repent from. All right, the next section we're going to look at is Lamentations 4. And we will look at verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, you who dwell in the land of us. The cup shall also pass over to you, and you shall become drunk and make yourself naked. It's interesting, in many passages of Scripture, the two of those concepts come are pretty much joined hand in hand. Whenever someone is drunk with the wine of Babylon, then they also become naked. And as we study along, we see that this message of Edom actually is to the synagogue of Satan. So that makes the book of Obadiah even more relevant to us. The next verse that we're going to look at, we're going to um, look in the book of Ezekiel. We will be looking at Ezekiel 16 and starting with verse 38. And I will judge you as women who break wedlock or shed blood are judged. I will bring blood upon you in, in fury and jealousy. I will also give you into their hand, and they shall throw down your shrines and break down your high places. They also shall strip you of your clothes, take your beautiful jewelry, and leave you naked and bare. They also shall break up, bring up an assembly against you, and they shall stone you with stones and thrust you through with the swords. They shall burn your houses with fire and execute judgments on you in the sight of many women. And I will make you cease playing the harlot, and you shall no more hire your lovers. Again, being drunk with the wine of Babylon, you're naked, and then judgment comes upon you as a result. Um, and scripture also says the daughter of the priest that plays the harlot, she will be burned with fire. All right, the next section let's look at is Ezekiel 23, and let's look at starting at verse 28. For thus says the Lord God, Surely I will deliver you in the hand of those who you hate, into the hand of those whom you alienated, alienated yourself. They will deal hatefully with you, take away all that you have worked for, and leave you naked and bare. The nakedness of your harlotry shall be uncovered, both your lewdness and your harlotry. I will do those things to you because you have gone as a harlot after the Gentiles, because you have become defiled by their idols. You have walked in the way of your sister. Therefore, I will put her cup into your hand. Now, her sister, um, for us that claim to be part of spiritual Israel, that would be literal Israel. So, you know, literal Israel... Um, was judged by God, and unfortunately, spiritual Israel, they repeat the same sins of literal Israel. 
So they will be judged as well. The next section we'll look at is Matthew 22, um, the parable of the um, wedding supper, starting in verse 10. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all whom they found, both good and bad. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guest, he saw a man there who did not have a wedding garment. So he said to him, friend, how did you come in here without a wedding garment? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the servants, bind him hand and foot, take him away and cast him into outer darkness. There there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. You know, I think in in scripture, this is uh, very clear that those who do not have the robe of Christ's righteousness, those who are naked, they will not be saved. Um, We can think as Laodicea that we are going to be okay. We're not unless we repent. And for the last section, I want to contrast the nakedness of Laodicea with the remnant. And that is found, the description of her is found in Revelation 19. Then a voice came, this is verse 5, Then a voice came from the throne saying, Praise our God, all you servants and those who fear him, both small and great. And I heard, as it were, the voice of a great multitude, as a sound of many waters, and as the sound of the mighty thundering, saying, Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigns. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made her ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is a righteous acts of the saints. Brothers and sisters, we cannot be naked and simultaneously also have the clean white linen on us. You know, only the man clothed in linen from Ezekiel chapter 9, who has the writer's inkhorn on his side. Only he can give us the clean, bright linen. And what a beautiful picture of the remnant that we have in Revelation 19. This is God's true people. And again, there is no such thing as being naked um, because the man clothed in linen, he wants to give you his righteousness. And that's why the man clothed in linen in Scripture is often seen with the measuring line in his hand. And that measuring line is, do you have on his robe of righteousness? Blessings to you.